All right, welcome back to another WV Guns and Goats video, and tonight we are taking a tabletop look at the Live Free Armory Apollo 11. Before we do get started, though, I'd like to ask you to please like, comment, and hit that subscribe button to join the herd here at WV Guns and Goats. Now, we've already did a range video about this pistol, but there were a few things that I wanted to go over in a little further detail. We will be covering some of the features that we already went over in that video, but doing it here on the tabletop, gives you a lot closer look at the gun. So what is the Apollo 11? Well, this is a true 2011 style pistol. It's not a fat frame 1911 like the Para Ordnance or the Rock Island Armories. This is a 2011 where the grip module is separate from the actual frame. This gun is all made in the USA with USA labor and USA sourced metals down in Florida by Live Free Armory. This is the 5 inch version of this gun. There is a 4.25 inch and a 3 inch model coming next year, probably after SHOT Show. This gun is available in three different colors, black, the FDE you see here, and also a gray. The coating on this gun is the Cerakote Elite Series, which offers improved wear and abrasion resistance, also really good impact resistance, and it has a slickness coefficient that is supposed to be comparable to Teflon, which allows this to have a really slick operation. It's also very chemically resistant, so you don't have to worry about your finish melting under solvent use. And because this is a 2011, this is a double stack 9mm pistol. Now, I don't think they have any plans for any other calibers besides 9mm. As we see, we have 17 round capacity here, and here is a 2011 magazine compared to a single stack 9mm 1911 magazine. This magazine is compatible with STI, Staccato, Infinity, Atlas, Phoenix Trinity, and Springfield Prodigy magazines. And there's probably one or two, I think I missed Masterpiece Arms, any of the 2011s that these magazines are compatible with. And this is made by Checkmate Industries. These magazines run about $40 and up. The price of those magazines is offset by the price of this gun. This comes in at under $1,000, right at $979. And that is unheard of in the 2011 market, especially for an all-American-made handgun. Your other option, I believe, is the Gerson at $999 MSRP, and that's a Turkish-made gun. But because Live Free Armory makes this gun completely in-house, they have decided to machine all of the internals on this gun. There are no metal injection molded parts in this gun. They even 3D print these grip modules, and we'll talk about them here in a moment. And I contribute just how smooth this pistol is. Like, check this out. Super smooth, and that's because these are all made in-house. They're not outsourcing these parts to another company and then having issues when they come in not fitting together. Now, they don't make the pins, the springs, or the screws on this gun, but, you know, that's just because they're such a small part, it would be wasting their time to make instead of buying. The initial run of these guns do come with a red dirt trigger. However, they are transitioning to an in-house made trigger, and because these are made in-house, we can look here at the fitment. The fitment is super nice, doesn't wobble, just has a hair of movement side to side, up and down, just has a hair of movement. Nothing that would make this gun feel cheap. There's no wobbliness to it. There's no rattling noises when you shake it. It seems like it should cost more than it does. But let's talk about the features that this gun has individually now. Underneath the front of the gun, we have some Picatinny rail slots for your lights and lasers. And then we have these nice serrations on the slide here. And they make it really easy to cycle that slide. In fact, I really like doing that just because it's so smooth. And up front, we have these lightning cuts. Now, they give it the appearance of being ported. However, as you can see, there's no holes there for ports, although it leaves it open to having it ported later which might be a nice addition to this gun. Let's look at the sights here. Up front, we have a high visibility ring around a tritium night sight, and it's very easy to pick up. 
through this all steel rear sight that has these serrations on it to cut down on glare. Then we see we have an optics cut cover plate. Let's go ahead and take this cover plate off and see what's underneath it. Now these had a good bit of Loctite on them when I first got this gun and they didn't really want to come loose easily. So I'll take that one off. And this is an RMSC footprint. So any of the RMSC sights should work on it. So here is what it looks like underneath that optics cut. As you can see, the gun is a little bit dirty from shooting it. We have an ambidextrous safety back here, and I'm going to flick that up, and you can hear this safety go on and off. Check this out. It's a very firm, very tactile safety. Look at the machining on that hammer. Commander-style hammer. Super nice machining there. And that extends to the fit of the beaver tail safety. Now, if we run our finger over here, there's no discernible ridge. It's not what they call proud. It doesn't stick up. And it's not recessed. It just fits very well together. Our mainspring housing is machined out of aluminum. And it's got this really nice scale pattern on it that the grip module has. This grip module is 3D printed in-house by Live Free Armory. Now, hold up. I know what you're thinking. 3D printing, isn't that just for little knickknacks and weird guns that people want to print at home? Well, an industrial 3D printer is leaps and bounds ahead of what you can buy at home. These layers are all fused together, and they're very strong. Watch. I'll try to squeeze it. I can only uh, just get a little tiny bit of flex out of there. The benefits of this being 3D printed, though, are one, they can keep the costs down and help contribute to keeping this an affordable pistol. Two, they have this texture built in to the grip module because of what they're printing it at. And it's a very nice grippy texture. And they were also able to put this really nice uniform scale pattern into it when they printed it. However, if you want to change this out, you can, because this is patterned after the staccato grip, which means there's a lot of aftermarket options for grips made out of aluminum, plastic, steel, and heck, you can even get titanium if you want to feel like a baller. But there is a whole aftermarket of grips you can get for this, but the grip that comes on it is completely serviceable, feels grippy, and just feels nice in the hand. And plus, because it's not made out of metal, it's not subject to being too hot or too cold when you're actually out there shooting. We're going to move on to the trigger next, and we're going to ghost that trigger for y'all. Back to the wall. Click. Little short travel till it hits the wall. And a firm break. Wall. Break. The trigger is, is really nice. It doesn't feel overly heavy. I'm not sure what it measures, but they advertise it as being three and a half pounds on their website. And I think they advertise this as an adjustable trigger because it has that little over travel uh, hex head screw in it. And that is taking a look at the trigger there. Next up, we're going to disassemble this gun and show it to y'all. Before we disassemble the pistol, you will need to make a tool out of a bent paper clip. That's for retention of the recoil spring in the full length guide rock. You see this little half moon here? And if you're familiar with the 1911, this will be very familiar to you. Just for YouTube's sake, for whoever may be watching this at YouTube, this is field stripping. It is required to clean the firearm. Nothing is being modified here. So we're going to slide that half moon back till it sits over top of our slide catch there. And then we're going to take a tool and we're going to push out the slide catch. Here's the slide catch if you guys want to check it out. Pretty, pretty nicely machined part there. Now we'll let the slide go back forwards and we'll push it off of the frame. The next thing you have to do is pull the barrel link back. Put your thumb here on the back of the recoil spring assembly and 
and we're going to push it forwards until that hole is exposed there. Take our bent paper clip and insert it into the hole and slowly let a little bit of tension off. Whatever you do, don't take that paper clip out of it while it's out of the gun or you will have to reassemble the recoil spring assembly. Now flick this back. It's already back on this one, so you can remove the recoil spring assembly there. All comes out in one piece, and then we have to push the barrel length forwards, and we can remove the barrel from the slide. Check this out. This is some really nice looking rifling in there. And this is the bull barrel, as I've said before, manufactured and rifled in-house by Lick Free Armory. And this gun, the Cerakote, as I said, cleans up fairly well. You can just wipe any kind of carbon off of it. Now to reassemble the slide, have your barrel link facing forwards and slide it into the slide there. Flip the barrel link backwards and with the two ears, slide your recoil assembly back in for the gun and then slide it forwards and those two ears had to face downwards i'm sorry i didn't mention that push forwards on the recoil assembly remove the tool you made and slowly gently let out on the pressure you will have to fold the barrel link backwards and now for reassembly, flip the barrel link so that it's in the middle there. We're going to take and slide the frame rail cuts onto the frame rails here of the slide. All right, now see in that hole there how it's kind of blocked right now? Push it forwards and flip the gun around to you. You should be able to see through the hole there. Take your slide catch and just insert it in there. It won't go all the way yet. Pull this back and push the slide catch back into the frame. The gun is now reassembled. There it is, a closer tabletop look at the Live Free Armory Apollo 11. I know there were some things that I missed in the original video, and I had hoped to cover them in this video tonight. Maybe this answered some questions you had, or maybe this just gave you a closer look at the Apollo 11 itself, as well as showing you how easy it is to disassemble and reassemble this gun. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you have any more questions, please leave them down in the comments section. And this has been another WV Guns and Goats video. Remember, if you're not out there having fun shooting, what are you doing?